right, we're rolling. Let's get into it. Hey. Welcome to the podcast. Nothing we don't changed. really have an intro. That kind of sucks. <clears throat> I wish we had like a cool intro. We'll work on it. Maybe one day it'll just come to us. Nothing changed this time. Same setup. Yeah. There's a little behind the scenes change changes, but mostly the same. Um, we got a babysitter got? this time, so yeah, we got there, a won't, there won't be any interruptions. Yeah, so Phoebe won't be knocking and... But you might hear her screaming and playing, so. Yeah. Do you want to know a comment that somebody, somebody being my mom, gave me? Hmm. She said, you need to talk to Carlos like you're talking to Carlos because you're talking to Carlos, but you talk about him in the third person. Yeah, seriously. But it's like because we're it's telling. Hard. It's hard because we're telling you guys a so story. you're doing it again. Right. But I'm now I'm talking to them. I'm not talking to you. Like it's we wanted this to be like we're having a conversation with each other. But really, we're talking to you guys and telling you guys these stories and these experiences and stuff. And so it makes it hard to be to like tell Carlos a story that he already knows. I would like it if you he talk to me. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll try my best. Ow. Well, uh, yeah, it's hard because the nature of it feels like, yes, we're talking to each other, but... Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like we're talking to each other in front of an audience. So it's hard. Do you talk to each other or do you talk to the audience? And we, we know most of, uh, we know most of what we say to each other. I don't right. know. That's not the right way to put it, but we know each other's stories and stuff. So right. we have to kind of think in a, from a third person perspective so that we can. I think when we're having, when we're doing a podcast episode where we are just having a conversation with each other and talking about topics that we haven't talked to each other about, then that's when it's appropriate to just talk to each other. But when we're doing a podcast episode where we're telling the viewers about something we experienced, I think it's okay to talk to the viewers. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that sound good or no? No, I think that makes sense. Cause, uh, yeah, we'll have different, we'll have different vibes for different podcasts. But so this one we're talking about, shepherd which is yes that's gonna be fun because that was a good experience yes what did you notice as far as pregnancy wise was different from shepherd and, and with phoebe so so for those watching this episode if you don't know who we are or um haven't watched the past episodes i have two kids or we have two kids um phoebe is two and i had her in the hospital and Shepard is five months old today. <gasps> oh, yeah. He's five months old today. And I had him naturally, no medication. I had a water birth with him at a birth center, which is very controversial. I remember um, when Why I... Why is that so controversial? Because it's like... You know That's what? the... When you think about it, even, what, 200 years ago... The, so the way that I see it in a lot of the world, a lot of society doesn't see it this way these days is when I had, so I had the worst, most horrible experience when I had Phoebe at the hospital. And after that, I knew, I knew that if I had more kids, I wanted to do it naturally. I did not want medication because of the experience that I had. And I wanted, I did not want to go to a hospital to be gaslit and basically like to just be like mistreated and not taken seriously. I didn't want to feel like an inconvenience. Um, sorry, I forgot where I was going with that. What, what did you ask me? Um, I don't remember either, <laughs> but we had a, the hospital is kind of like a one size fits all. So I think you're talking about, um, Last week we talked about Phoebe's oh, birth. Yes. So I want I knew that sorry, let me turn that off. I knew that I wanted to do it naturally and and when I told everybody that I had decided to go to a birth center, I got some some people, specifically my mom and your parents, um, and Kaylin and Mitchell were like, You go. Yes, you're gonna have the best time. It's gonna be like I am so happy for you that you get to do that. But there were a lot of people, and I was surprised at their reaction when they said, oh my gosh, please don't do that. P 
people die all the time at birth centers. I really, you're, it's going to go so bad. You're going to end up having to go to a hospital anyway. And they were like trying to scare me out of it. And I was just, uh, there was no evidence that if you go to a birth center, you're going to end up having complications or you're going to end up going to a hospital anyway. And I had, I had friends who have experienced going to the birth center and they told me that it was just the most amazing feminine, just like experience. Like it was, it felt like how God intended it to feel. Mm -hmm. And it was it painful not having medication. Sure. But the That's what you recovery, get for eating from the, the tree of life, huh? I guess the so. Thanks, of, Eve. The knowledge of good and evil. But um, the recovery was so much better. The experience all around was just like I felt so in it and so connected with my labor and delivery. Um, but anyway, we can get into the story and I can share all that at the at right time in the story. Yeah. Um, one thing to note is this... This time around, it wasn't originally like that. Remember, at the beginning of your pregnancy, we were, yes, we were trying to find a, a doctor in a hospital to go to because mm -hmm. the the VA was gonna let yes. you give birth at a hospital. They told you that so, you need to go to a hospital, right? Talk about that. Yes. So, um, when I found out that I was pregnant with Shepard, I had, I had, I knew that I wanted to do it naturally, and I looked into going to the birth center and I have VA insurance. So when I talked to my representative, I said, Hey, I want to go to a birth center. And they, she told me, no, you can't. If you want VA insurance to cover your birth, um, you're going to have to go to a VA. You're going to have to go to a hospital. Um, that's, that the VA like works with. Um, and so I was just like, you know what? That's, that's fine. It's okay. Um, well, to us, we were still more excited about that because I it was, was still, in a military yes, hospital. I was still more excited to go to a civilian hospital than I was to be because of my experience with going to a Naval hospital. And so I thought, you know what? It's still going to be better than the experience I had before. I know more now. I have experience with this. And so I'm going to stick up for myself. I'm going to stand up for myself. I'm going to tell them what I want and what I don't want. And I'm going to make sure that they accommodate me because I'm paying them to do this, right? Um, and this is about me. My labor, my delivery, my pregnancy is about me. It's not about the doctors. They're, they signed up for this, right? This is their job. It's not about what you want or what's more convenient for you. It's about me and what I need in that moment because I'm going through this and I'm paying you, right? Um, and so about, I, I went to this civilian hospital and it wasn't bad. I didn't have like a super experience, but I didn't have a bad experience like I had with the VA or not with the VA, um, with the Naval Hospital. Oh, oh. I'm, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I see where you're, yeah. Yeah, and so I go, I'm like, how how many months is thirty three weeks? Uh, seven. No, 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 because I was, I was like twenty nine, twenty nine weeks, and I was like, when did you hear you know about what? the birth center? When Kaylin had gave birth there. So Kaylin went to the birth center. She was telling me all about it. And I was we were pregnant at the same time, but she was due a couple of months before me. And so she had given birth at the birth center. And she told me this, it was so amazing. It was the best experience. Like, you and have her. to try to go. You have to try to go. And I was like, I really want to. But they told me, like, I can't pay for it. And they told me that if I... If I go, they're not, the VA was not going to cover it. But then something told me, and by something, I mean the good Lord up above. He said. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard you say that. The good Lord up above. The good Lord. He said, 
something in my little brain was like, go to the go to the birth center website and look at the insurance that they take. We'll come to find out they take TRICARE, which is what I have, right, through the VA. And I go, well, that's weird because the VA told me that they wouldn't cover it. So, but if TRICARE covers going to the birth center, like, what is going on? So I call the birth center. I'm 27 weeks. Mm -hmm. No, 28. 27 or 28, 29 weeks, somewhere around there. So I call the birth center and I'm like, hey... Do you guys take VA health care? And she goes, yeah. And I was like, wow. Um, okay, how do I go about coming to you guys? Because I am, and I told her my situation. I said, I'm 28 weeks pregnant and I'm going to a hospital. But my VA um, provider told me that I cannot give birth at the birth center, that I have to go to the hospital. And she was like, Oh my gosh, let's get you over here. So I went to the orientation. First of all, I, I pause, <laughs> rewind. Um, <laughs> that's so fun. Um, so after I had that phone call, I called the VA and I'm like, listen, I need to speak to somebody, but not the person that I was speaking to before. So I get a new um, representative. And I'm like, hey, I really, 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 really want to, like, go to this birth center. Like, this is what I wanted from the beginning. The other lady that I talked to told me that I was not allowed to. And this lady on the phone, she goes, oh, my goodness, that she should not have told you that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can go to the birth center. Do you want me to do you want me to give you a referral right now to go? And I was like, yes. So and this lady was so quick about it. Um, but how, but so then I go to the birth center orientation cause you have to go to an orientation and, um, everything got approved. I go to the orientation, but I cannot go to my first appointment until they get all of my medical records from the hospital that I was going to at the time, the OB that I was going to. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, let me go get it really quick. And so I go to the OB office and they're like, sorry, like we can't do that right here. You have to call records at the hospital that we're attached to. And so it was this whole thing and it took them like a month. It took them a month to get my records over to the mm -hmm. birth center. And mind you, the birth center, it wasn't that they weren't doing their job. It was just that I they would not take me as a client, as as a patient, until they knew that my pregnancy was not high risk. And that's something I really appreciated. And that's something that people were trying to scare me in with was like, they don't care about you. They just want your money. And that is not the case. They made sure that I was not high risk. They made sure everything was okay before they would even take me on as a client because they just, they really truly care about your health. And the midwives are amazing. Um, so it's about a month before I get to go, before I even have an appointment because I had already stopped going to the hospital. At what point did you, there was at one point in this process where you called me and I think I was at work and you called me and you were like, um, you were, you were really worried about not being able to get transferred and because you were yeah. 32 weeks or whatever. And, and it was really, you were starting to get concerned that you would get caught in this like middle between two places. And then you would end up really not belonging to either and having yeah. to give birth by yourself or mm -hmm. I know that that was, when was that? I was, I was worried about that because the, civilian doctor was taking so long to get my records over to the um, birth center yeah and you called me and you said i don't want to well, i don't want to go to the birth center here's the thing anymore. is once you reach 36 weeks of pregnancy you, the birth center will not let you transfer also you were uh you didn't talk about the waiting list because they have they yes oh my goodness i forgot about that yeah 
So the birth center had a wait, they have a waiting list because they only have so many rooms available per month. Um, like they only have so many rooms and they can only take so many people, so many They don't um, want to overbook themselves. Right. Per birth month, right? And so there was a wait list and I said, okay, like, let me get on this wait list and we'll just see. At 29 like, weeks pregnant. 29 weeks pregnant. Yeah. And literally not that, not a freaking day later, she calls me and says, we just had somebody who had to move out of state because they were military and there's a spot open for you. Yeah. That was kind of and cool. it was just, it was such a God thing because it was perfect timing. And that was something that he was trying to tell me my entire pregnancy was trust in my perfect timing, trust in my perfect timing. And I did not want to listen. And well, I'll tell you later, like how I came to know that he was telling me that. Um, but so where were we? So, so you, there was a wait list. Yep. You got on the wait list. They had contacted you back saying, Hey, there's a spot open. And mm-hmm. then I think it was right after that, um, probably within the next week when they were having issues trying to actually get you transferred to them. And you called me and you're like, this is too stressful. Like, I don't know if they can do it. And um, I, I remember almost you, said, I'm just not going to do it. I remember you, t- you called me and you said, I'm just going to give birth at the hospital. And I said, why? And I told you, like, you have time. I think it'll be worth it. I think... Like you were, you were literally about to, to call the hospital and be like, and the VA and be like, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, no, nope, you, you should do it. Yeah. That was one of the things where I, for some reason I was like, um, usually that, that kind of thing worries me too. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want you to get caught between two places. Yeah. And for some reason this time I was like, no, you know what? You should, you should definitely give birth at the birth center. Yeah. And so, you, so right after that, you got really excited about it. You had, I had affirmed you. Well, yeah. Once you had, once I had heard that you were not worried about it, it just kind of gave me this sense of peace, this sense of calm, like everything's gonna be okay. Um. And so, yeah. Twenty nine weeks pregnant. So no, then I'm then I'm thirty three weeks pregnant when I have my first appointment with mm-hmm. the birth center. And you were they having were orientation so, or uh, no, what was I had it called? orientation first. A walkthrough or something. Remember, we went together and we were with, I think, moms who were just that was, pregnant. That was not was orientation. That? That, was the, that was the birthing class. Okay. So they also required me to take a birthing class before I was 36 weeks what, pregnant. What were all the requirements? Go through those. So there were a lot of classes that you were required to take. And if this was your first pregnancy, not if this was your first pregnancy without an epidural, um, or if you were a VBAC, then What's that? vaginal birth after cesarean. So if you had a C-section before, um, and you're trying to give birth naturally this time, then you're required to have a doula. Was it just epidural? Was it uh, anyone who had gone to a hospital first? If it was your first time doing a natural labor or a birth away from a hospital, right? Was that? Yes. Was that what it was or? It's no, it was if. if your first epidural. time at the birth center, I thought. No. Okay. If it was your first, if it was your first time giving birth without medication, without an epidural. Okay. You're required to, to hire a doula and you had to, they didn't pay for the doula and the VA didn't pay for the doula, but we are so lucky because we had the HSA. We have an HSA account and we were able to pay for our doula with that. So then what's also crazy and an, another God thing that just happened was they said, okay, you need to hire a doula. And I'm sitting here like, oh my goodness, I'm 33 weeks pregnant. Mm-hmm. I literally like, who's going to, who is going to be able to take me? Because doulas are, once you're pregnant, you're supposed to hire a doula once you're like 12 weeks. Yeah, they help, they help you f- pretty much through the second trimester and third trimester and through labor. Yeah. And you are already in third trimester by this yes. point. 
Yes. And so I'm I'm sitting here like nobody's going to be able to take me on as a a client because they're already scheduled out. They're they already have all their birth months like um filled and so I emailed probably like six or seven doulas and every single one of them was like, "Hey, I'm so sorry like I don't have I can't take any more clients for the the month of August, like we're, I'm all booked out. And so, um, except for, no, so not every single one of them, all of them except for one. And that was Morgan. Shout out Morgan. We love you. She was a, an amazing doula. She's an amazing person. And um, she, she emails me back and she goes, hey, I just had a client cancel on me because she had to move out of state. And we're like, no freaking way. Was it the same? Yes. Mm. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't think she ever confirmed it, but I don't think that's coincidence. Yeah. So I'm like, no way that they have a spot open for me and there's a doula available. Because if I could not get a doula, I could not go to the birth center. Mm -hmm. And so. What is a, what's a doula? A doula is not a midwife. A doula is, the, I, and I'm not, I feel like we should have Morgan on here to talk about it. Yeah. Um, But she, like, they help you through your pregnancy. They give you advice. And during labor, especially labor and delivery, she was a rock star. She kept me grounded. She kept me calm. She helped me through my contractions. She helped me to breathe. And we were able to also take most of the required classes with Morgan and being 33 weeks pregnant at this point, you're supposed to do all of these classes and everything and all of these appointments throughout your entire pregnancy. And I had, I remember I was going to the birth center twice a week because they wanted to get all of my appointments in. Like they wanted to catch me up. They mm -hmm. didn't want to just say, oh, well, we're going to have you go to the last three appointments that we usually have people go to. No, they were like, we want to get to know you. We want you to know all the midwives so we're going to make sure right. that you get at least one appointment with every single midwife we have. That way, when you're giving birth to your son, you're not with some stranger. And that was amazing because with Phoebe, I had never met the doctor you never that I had in my doctor. life. I never right. met any doctor the entire time that I was pregnant with Phoebe. And I didn't know, you know any what? of the nurses. You, I didn't know anybody. You met one guy. And he was like he was 80 creepy. years old. And I remember you were, so this is going back to last, last episode with Phoebe. And if you didn't listen to that, go check that out because that, yeah, traumatic experience. But I, this will bring up some memories. That guy, I remember when you were maybe 12 weeks pregnant, he was doing the ultrasound and Phoebe was just, she was in there. She was healthy. Listen to the heartbeat. And he wanted us to see her kick or something. So do you remember he was started pressing in your belly and like started shaking you? Yeah. And he was like pressing really hard, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yes. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even think, I, I just remembered that. Yeah, me too. But I kind of, I think most of like my pregnancy with Phoebe is just freaking blocked out. Yeah. I remember after that appointment, we were like, what the heck was he doing? And my, I remember like, my up. stomach hurt after because he was doing it hard. Yeah. yeah. He was trying to shake her before she even came out. Um, anyway, sorry. Going back to to Shepard. The, did the um, birth center have any ultrasounds or anything? Yes. How so were those they, appointments? What did they do? So at the birth center, when I was like... They did an ultrasound at first just to because they wanted to see on their end, not on the hospital's end, that everything was okay. And good thing they did because the hospital had, or I keep saying hospital, but it was an OBGYN office that was attached to a hospital. Um, they had no records of any of my ultrasounds saying where my they had no record showing where my placenta was 
or if I was anterior or posterior or anything. And so the birth center was like, well, we cannot just go off of nothing. We have to know where your placenta is at in order for you to be able to give birth here. So they they did an ultrasound and everything was fine. It was in a good place. Yeah. Um, and what does that mean? Ex- explain. So I them. don't, I don't know which is which, but I know that one of them is either it's in the, f- in the front or in the back, I think. And then yeah, it's, or and high then, or low, or it's like over your cervix. And yeah, if it's over your cervix, you're not going to be able to give birth. Yeah. Vaginally. Um, I think don't quote me on that. I'm, Ask your doctor. Yeah, you're more high risk. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll talk to. I think we should talk to Morgan because she would be an interesting, interesting person to interview. Yes, um, for sure. So tell me more about the the appointments that you had with each of these midwives, and what they did. And I did what not your have was. a single bad experience or bad, like. Can I can I say what I remember of anybody? Yeah, go ahead. I remember after you met the first lady. Do you remember her, what her name was? Tara. Tara. And she so, was she was my midwife during labor and delivery. Yeah. I remember you had met the first lady, Tara. And um, I think I got home from work and, and you were telling me like, oh, she was the coolest. I hope that she's the one that delivers my baby. Like she was yeah. the nicest, sweetest lady. And then uh, a couple of days later, you <laughs> met someone else there. And you were like, oh my goodness, she was so cool. It'd be cool if she gave birth to, or delivered my baby or was there. Um, and then it was like that with every person that you met. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah. Every single. That'd be cool with anyone. Every single one of them were so cool and so nice. And they made me feel, I get a little bit teary eyed talking about this because it was just a dr- such a drastic, drastic difference. Is that the right? Drast- drast- blah, blah. It was yeah. such a big huge difference from what I felt when I was pregnant with Phoebe they all made me feel like they cared about me they wanted to get to know me they made me feel heard I would tell them my concerns and even though my concerns were things that they probably heard all the time they didn't make me feel stupid for asking questions or telling them like hey I think this is I think something is going on here or can you look at this like they didn't make me feel like an inconvenience they didn't make me feel like I was stupid. They made me feel heard and respected. Yeah. And I just knew from the first appointment going there, I was like, this is going to be an amazing experience. So these appointments, and I never really went to any of them, so I'm just talking mm-hmm. about what I heard from you, so maybe you can go into more depth. But I remember you were talking about how they – all felt like they they knew a lot more and they were passionate about what they were doing and it so was they- amazing because none of the nurses none of the OBGYNs that I ever met could tell how my baby was positioned and every time they wanted to know where he was positioned they would do an ultrasound well going to the birth center my first appointment I remember Tara starts belly mapping and I'm like, what are you doing? Cause I've, they'd never done that before. She's feeling around on my stomach and just pressing very lightly and just feeling. And I remember she gets out the, um, what is that called? Doppler. Is that the fetal called? Doppler. She gets out the fetal Doppler and I'm thinking, okay, like after feeling around on your belly for how long? Probably. 20 seconds less than that yeah and so she gets out the fetal doppler and i'm thinking okay like she's probably gonna have a hard time finding a heartbeat because they always have a hard time finding it immediately she puts it on my belly heartbeat she did not even have to move it not once she knew exactly how he was positioned exactly where his heart would be and i just thought how did you find that? And I asked her, how did you find that so quickly? Mm-hmm. It usually takes them forever. And she goes, and she explained to me what belly mapping was. And she goes, I can feel his head right here. Right here is his knee. This is his foot. This is his shoulder. And I'm thinking, how in the world do you feel that? Mm-hmm. That is amazing. 
and they never had to do an ultrasound to figure out how my baby was positioned and like the further along I got they wanted to make sure that he was in an optimal position to give birth and that they could they could tell if he was like back to belly or back to spine it was just freaking amazing yeah and uh I think even Morgan could yeah, belly map when you met Morgan and and she did the same thing that was something that you'd never experienced and, yeah too. and Morgan actually showed me how to how to belly map so that I could do it myself and know how the baby was positioned because if he was Shepard moved around so much I mean one minute he would be in the perfect position and then the next minute he would be like belly to or back to spine or and it was just and that's not how you're supposed it's not supposed to be back to back um and so then I would have to do um what is that called I forgot what it was called Some sort of circuit what was it called well there's the circuit but it was a uh, the uh, miles circuit helped but it was something else that I was supposed to do these exercises yeah um and these sitting in these positions Shoot, that would help that him to, I don't remember I'll look it up keep going um but yeah it was just I mean, I still cannot, I will never, I will never, ever give birth in a hospital ever again unless it is absolutely medically necessary because my experience was so good. Spinning babies. Spinning babies, yes. I would have to do spinning babies. So it's things like laying on the, the couch in a way that your leg was dangling from it and your belly was hanging off the couch and... And then just in positions your, that would encourage baby to move yeah, into a basically good position. doing a, a headstand, I think was one of them kind of like just laying your legs were on the couch and then legs on the couch, um, elbows, on the elbows on the floor, floor so that you're inclined head down. Yeah. yeah. So, and I remember, um, Morgan was the same way. So the doulas usually are, like we said with you the whole pregnancy, but we'd only met her when you were 33, 34 weeks. And so she, it was funny, the classes that she was giving us was like, we'd, we'd gone through pregnancy before. Right. So, so you understood most of it. We had been through the classes. And I think that's why she was more willing to take you on too, was because you weren't like a brand new mom at, and trying to figure things out at 34 weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So the things that she was going over were familiar to you. Yeah. And so I think that, that helped too. Um, but yeah, we were doing first trimester classes when you were about to give birth in a month, which is kind of funny. But so moving forward to, I think we've covered most of the um, birth center, what they did while you were pregnant, mm -hmm. move on to actual labor. So the way that the birth center was is they had three or four rooms and they were all decorated in different themes different styles um explain explain what the rooms look like yeah so one of them was like more mo mid-century modern one of them was like country chic one of them was like cottage um like cottage core vibes and um one of them was pink and they you got to like put on a list which one you wanted and which one like which one you wanted the most down to which one you wanted the least. But they all had similarities. What what were in the rooms? So every room had a giant tub, this giant super deep tub. Um, And that was so that you could have a water birth if you wanted to, or you could labor in the tub. Every room had a full-sized bed, or was it a queen size? So I'll explain what, what I remember because... Um, I remember walking into the room during, um, not orientation, what was it? During just the birth class. Yeah. So they showed us one of the rooms and you walk in and um, I remember seeing the big tub, which was basically in the middle of the room. And um, like, because there's, there's room for people to be all around the tub. And then above the tub, there were these things that you could hold on to. Um, mm -hmm. So bars and then these kind of rope things that you could these straps. Yeah. Straps that you could hold on to. And there was a s staircase leading up into the tub. And then around the room, there were some dressers. I think some were meant for 
the moms who were giving birth and then some had medical supplies in them and they told us the the one over there is for you guys or whatever and then this one's for us um and then yeah right next to the tub there was this i think probably a queen size bed and then it, it was a hotel room basically and um there but was a it, bathroom full bathroom with a shower and it was a big bathroom too it felt less like a hotel and more like you're in somebody's home it, it wasn't felt yeah. like home it whereas hotels are like very put together and uh minimal mm -hmm. you know decorations and stuff this felt yeah there was it felt like you you were going to someone's house or you were giving birth in your I think that's what it was designed really for. It, is yes, it was. To feel like you were in your own home. It was mm -hmm. cozy. They could turn the lights down so it didn't feel like you were in a hospital. Like yes. you gave birth in basically candlelight. Yes. And and if you guys want to see what that looks lighting. like, you guys can see what that looks like on our on our other YouTube channel. I can link it. But yes, and they, we can also put in because they have pictures on the website, so we can screenshot those and put them in. So yeah. if you're, we encourage you to watch on YouTube so you can see those things. Yeah, you just gave me more work, but okay. I'll I'll help you with <laughs> it. Kidding. I'll send you the pictures. No, that's easy enough. Um, but yeah, go check out that video because you can see basically candlelight. They had a speaker that I I had hooked up to, and yes, I started playing music. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? They had um, diffusers, oil diffusers, so you right. could diffuse any type of oil oil you wanted. I had lavender going while I was um, while I was in labor. Um, and I remember yeah. they had twinkly lights in the bathroom. They didn't call the bath. What did they call the bathroom? The dilation station. They called the toilet, the mm -hmm. dilation station, yeah. because when you're sitting on the toilet, um, so what they had me do is they had me sit on the toilet. I'll talk about that when, it, when it gets to that. Yeah. So let's go, let's back up and let's go to when I started labor. So yeah, like Phoebe... Like Phoebe, I was in prodromal labor, but this time it was a long time. It wasn't four days; it was weeks mm -hmm. that this would that this was happening. And it might have happened that way with Phoebe too, if they hadn't done all the medical intervention. Yeah, yeah, because I was thirty-seven weeks when I started to have little contractions. And I don't think that, I think that those were just Braxton Hicks um, at 37 weeks, but all the way up until 40 weeks and six days is when I had Shepard. So I was almost, I was about a week past my due date. Yeah. And what, do you remember, I think at 41 weeks, they said they would start trying to help you get labor going? Yes. Is it 41 or 42? 41. Because once you, because once you hit forty two weeks, then they're not going to take you anymore. That you're going to have to go to a hospital. Right. Um. And so at forty one weeks, the birth center will help you. They'll do things to help you naturally try to get labor going. Like what? Whether that be one of the things that they said to try was nipple stimulation. Um. They could try, and they let you choose. They give you options, and they let you choose which one you want to do. One of them was castor oil. But they do not recommend, and I don't recommend either, taking castor oil unless you are with somebody who knows what they're doing. What did they What did they say they were concerned about with castor oil? Castor oil can make your contractions hurt a lot more. And it can put, I think what they were saying is it can put your baby in distress if hmm. you take too much of it. And it's also a laxative. So you're going to be pooping. Which... Uh, it's interesting a lot of the natural inducers or whatever they call them are laxatives like because it's essential that your body is relaxed yeah it's the same things that that if you look up i'm constipated it's the same list yeah of, of things eating dates so once i reached 36 weeks they gave me a regimen of things to do and of supplements to take so i had to take the prenatal vitamin mm -hmm. i had to drink raspberry leaf tea like three cups a day what was that? Um, what? What was that for? Raspberry leaf tea is to help. I I think it's to help ripen your cervix. Mm -hmm. Dates to help ripen your cervix. Um, they had me taking shepherd's purse, and that was, 
also, I think, to help ripen your cervix. Do they do most, that with everyone or just you? Yes, everyone. They give you a list of things that, and you don't have to do it, but it's highly recommended. And it's all natural herbs, natural supplements yeah. that are just there to help your body get prepared. It doesn't induce labor. It helps your body prepare itself for labor. And once your body's prepared for labor, you're going to be able, like your body's going to go into labor quicker if it's prepared quicker. But so, it also kind of depends on your baby. Um, the other thing they, was it Morgan or your mom or someone had told you to, to put raspberry leaf tea on a pad or something? No. What was that? So my mom, my mom said, do you want to know? My mom had five babies and she never tore, not one time. She had mm -hmm. them all naturally, no epidural, nothing. And she even had my brother by herself at the hospital because the nurses would not listen to her mm -hmm. when she said, my baby's coming. And then she had my sister by herself at home because her midwife didn't make it on time. And she said, I've never tore. And what I would do, my midwife told me to do this when I was pregnant, was I would take a pad and you would you put olive oil or whatever kind of oil you want. And you can put frankincense on it. You can make this mixture of frankincense, some other essential oil and olive oil and you just put it in a bottle and you put it on a pad and you just you wear it and you change it out every few hours and you just wear it constantly and did you end up doing that i did i did do that and what it does is it you soak your perineum now we're getting into some weird words yeah your perineum is what tears when you have a baby olive oil they tell you to put on your belly for stretch marks too, right? So you don't... I don't know. I think they say you can put olive oil on um, your belly while you're pregnant so that you don't get stretch marks. That might be wrong, but I wonder if it's the same I don't kind, know. Of, same kind yeah. of principle. Well, yeah. Anyway, don't want to go too far down that rabbit trail, but there was a bunch of natural things that both the, the midwives and Morgan everything, had told you to do. Yes. Everything that they had told me to do was natural. Yeah. It wasn't take this pill that you get from the pharmacy. Or you not take this one time. Vaccine or, yeah. Yeah. And what I loved about the birth center was before I went in for labor, at my first appointment, my first appointment, they gave me not even, no, you know what? It wasn't even an appointment. It was this paperwork I had to fill out before I even went to the birth center at was it all. The birth plan or? My birth plan. They had me fill out a birth plan. And they said, do you want. Do you plan on using laughing gas? No. Okay. Do you plan on doing this, this, and this? And one of the one of the pages that I had to fill out was, do you want to give your baby the Hep B vaccine? Do you want to give them this vaccine, this vaccine, this vaccine, this vaccine? And I said no to all of them. And that was that. Mm -hmm. They never asked me any more questions about it. They never tried to coerce me into doing it. They didn't say. They never tried to scare me into doing it or guilt trip me into doing it. They said, okay. We, and. I talked to Tara about this. She said, we respect your decision. Yeah. This is your baby. You're the mother. You're the parent of this child. We're not going to try to do anything that you don't want us to do. And I think the hospital says that too, but they say it in a different bit, of, like a little bit different of a tone. They say, um, we why? highly, we highly recommend this. And we just really want to make sure that you're educated. Right. We before... want to make sure that you know what you're, you're doing. Are you sure? Do you have any questions? And so they'll they'll say all these things, but the birth center, they didn't do that unless they didn't give they you did unsolicited. Make sure. They didn't give you unsolicited advice. They did make sure. They were like, we want to make sure that you know um, that you know what these are and what they're for. And if you don't want to get them, we're not gonna we're not gonna tell you to do it. Yeah, and that was that. So they informed me, and once I gave them my informed decision, it was that. And that was amazing yeah. because with Phoebe, I had Phoebe during COVID and during all this stuff going on with COVID. And I did not want to get the COVID vaccine while I was pregnant. Yeah. And they tried to tell me you're a bad mother for not doing this for your baby. Your baby is probably going to end up sick and die. I'm not even kidding you when I tell you they said this to me. You're a bad mother. Your baby is going to end up sick and they're going to end up dying if you don't do this. Yeah. Yeah, you're was, not thinking of your child. 
this was the military too and they were trying to get everyone vaccinated and that's the whole reason we got kicked out but um i had talked to a coworker recently and his daughter was pregnant during covid and she got the vaccine and had a miscarriage that's anecdotal i don't think you know i'm not going to say that the vaccine causes miscarriages but but it was like that's another episode but we don't in know. itself but we don't know was the point and so that's why yeah, the birth center was such a cool experience because they didn't pressure you at all into, hey, do this, do this, do this. They were just like, what What do you want? Here, mm-hmm. Here's what we offer. Here's our supplies. Tell us what you yeah. want and we'll and it, make it easy for you. And it goes back to what I said at the beginning. They understood that this was about me. Mm-hmm. They understood that this was my experience and this was about what I wanted and how I wanted to do things. And that's not to say that if something were to happen and I needed medical, like I needed, I needed something that I didn't want, they were going to make sure that I got what I absolutely needed. But unless it was medically necessary, it was up to me. So we've been talking for a while about like the birth center and in pregnancy. That's go, true. let's go into labor because. So I start labor. I'm in pajama labor for like three weeks. Mm-hmm. And the whole time I'm praying, like, God, I'm trying to trust in your perfect timing. I just, like, why is this taking so long? Because at this point, like, once you reach 38 weeks, you're done. You're like, come on out, dude. You're getting evicted. I'm done being pregnant. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm hitting 41 weeks. And I'm crying every day. I'm bouncing on my birth ball every day, all day. I'm doing everything to try to get labor going. And it's just not working. And it was so frustrating because... Every day I would have contractions for a few hours. They would start to get consistent and they would start to get stronger. And every day they would stop and I would just start crying and crying and crying because I was so done. Well, then 40 weeks and six days comes along. It was a Friday. I don't remember. It was a Friday. You had you had so invited again, uh, Yasmin again. We had Yasmin fly out before a day before I went into labor. Well, the plan was that she would be here after you had had Shepherd. Yes. So we bought we had she bought her plane tickets like a couple months in advance or a month in advance or something. Yes, because I was due the twenty first, and I thought for sure, I was like, okay, there's no way I'm going over my due date. So like. Let's have you come out, and she flew out the 26th, I think, the 25th or 26th. Mm-hmm. Let's have you come out the 25th. That way, like, you don't miss the birth, or that way, like, you don't get here for nothing. Like, I will definitely have the baby at that point. I will definitely have the baby. And that you way, you me. don't get here, and I haven't given birth yet, and yeah. you have to go home. And so she gets here, and I'm still not in labor. And we're thinking, what in the world? Like, we literally planned ahead of time for this. Mm-hmm. For the fact that we didn't want you to be here for no reason. Well, the next day, I wake up. We're hanging out. We go on a couple walks. And then I start having contractions at like 10 in the morning. 10 a.m. And I'm thinking like, oh, I hope this is it. I hope this is it. But I'm not very hopeful because this this has been happening for three weeks. But then they don't stop for a couple of hours. Something was different about this time too that you you just, you said you felt a little bit different. Yes. Like you, that morning you're like, I think this is it. Yeah. I don't, I think your body, you just know. Yeah. Um, but so I text Morgan and I'm like, Hey, I'm having contractions. I think this might be it. Um, and then four in the afternoon comes along and contractions are picking up fast. Mm-hmm. They start, this is the, at this point, I'm like, okay, they've been happening for hours now. This is it. This is labor. I did not know how long labor was going to be mm-hmm. because, um, because it. You hear people who say like three days, they, they were in labor for three Or 24 days or, hours. Or yeah. you hear that with your second, you're only in labor for like. Super quick. 10 hours or like what it could. It's different it's, for everyone. Yeah. So I did not know how long labor was going to be, but I was laboring at home. And Morgan was. So at five o'clock, I, I, Carlos calls Morgan and he's like, hey. I called my parents first, right? No, we called Morgan. Okay. Or no, we did call your parents because they were 40 minutes out. They were far. So I told them you guys should start heading over. Well, we thought they were 40 minutes out, but they were in town, remember? Hmm. Um, 
So then, yeah, he calls his parents. They get there. We call Morgan. And at this point, I'm like, I can't talk through my contractions. They're painful. Mm -hmm. They're exactly what I remembered them being like before I got Pitocin with Phoebe. And the doctors kept telling me, no, you're not in labor. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Anyway. You bitter about that? (laughs) I am bitter about that. Anyway. So anyway, Morgan so comes. so Morgan comes over and uh, she's like, okay, like, let's do this. Let's do this. We go upstairs so that we can get away from the people because at this point, there's a lot of people in my house because my daughter is here. Carlos's parents are here and Yasmin is here. Morgan's here. Carlos is here. So she's like, let's go upstairs so we can be like alone and relax. So then I'm leaning, at, I'm leaning over our bed through contractions And Morgan is like, okay, we got to go. We get out. We head to the birth center. She gives you a blindfold. Morgan gave me a blindfold because I guess when your environment changes while you're in labor, it can slow your labor down. And she didn't want that to happen with me. Yeah. Um, Because if I wasn't six centimeters within an hour after getting to the birth center, they were going to send me back home to labor at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I get to the birth center Which is weird and they the tell center. me they, they, that they'll, um, they really want you in active labor when you show up. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I get to the birth center and she checks my cervix and she's like, you're only five centimeters dilated. So we're going to have you wait here for an hour and labor here for an hour. And if you're not six centimeters, then we're going to, um, send you back home to labor. And, what and time at, this was it at this point, th- it was like six thirty. Yeah, that sounds right. It was like six thirty when we got there. No, it was six thirty when Morgan got. It was probably like eight. No, 7:30? it was like seven, probably seven o'clock when we got to the birth center. Mm-hmm. Seven o'clock when we get to the birth center, and Morgan, I Morgan told me this after I had given birth to Shepard. But she said that when her and Tara, my midwife, walked out of the room to let me labor, Tara said to her, she's having that baby within the hour. Mm-hmm. Which is funny. Yeah, like she know. could tell because of how bad the contractions were. Mm-hmm. They could tell how quickly, how you strong were. they were. Yeah. So then I'm laboring and they have me, they start filling up the tub because at this point I'm like, I want to get in the water. Mm-hmm. So they have me, so they start filling up the tub and they have me go to the dilation station, which is the toilet. They have me sit backwards on the toilet. So my stomach is facing the back of the toilet. And, um, I, they put a pillow on the back of it so that I could lean up against it because the, what happens is when you're on the toilet is your, all your muscles in your pelvic floor relax, which helps when you're, when you have contractions, it helps your cervix dilate. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we started doing that and then I was like, I can't do this anymore. I need to be on my hands and knees in the bed. That's what I need. So we get, so I go to the bed and I'm on my hands and knees and I'm laboring and they say, okay, Emily, after a little bit, they're like, do you want to get in the water? And I'm like, yes. So I get in the water and I'm in the water for probably 15 minutes Mm -hmm. and I, through the contractions, I'm like, oh my goodness, it, this is, I don't know how much more I could take of this. Um, and then I remember, you I got remember, this all on video. Yes. And so that's, yeah. And I remember I could feel exactly where Shepard was. And when it was time to push, I did not push. My body pushed for me. I did not intentionally force any pushing. You were, and they never asked you to push, right? They never asked me to push. I don't. I don't think so. No, it's called bearing down. Yeah. And that's when you let your body do what it needs to do. Just breathe. You don't force anything. You just breathe through it. You just let it happen. You surrender to the contractions, and that's what they kept telling me. Emily, surrender to the contractions. And I remember praying the entire time I was in labor. I was like, Jesus, help me through this. Jesus, please be with me. Please help me through this. Please be with me. Because it was really scary um, knowing that I had to just go through it. 
-hmm. I couldn't just go to the hospital. I was too far along to change my mind. And I remember Which is kind of freeing at that point because it not being a choice is like, it it definitely helped me to be like, I don't have a choice. I have to do this. You can't ask for any medicine. They can't give you anything. You just got to do it. And so I remember though, hearing another woman in the room next to us Mm -hmm. having contractions and she was screaming. Mm -hmm. She was screaming. And that's one thing that Morgan was like, do not scream through your contractions. If you're going to do anything, you need to be Ooh. like as literally like it sounds weird but as low as you yeah, can like growling, moan basically. as low as you can because that's going to help everything relax mm-hmm. so i was focused on that that's what i was thinking about through all my contractions was like this hurts but also like i need to lower my voice and i need to be calm and i need to breathe yeah um and then i guess the lady next to us had decided to go to the hospital and at that point I was like, well, I think they made her right. Or, or did she, she decide? decided to go? Do you think at this point, if you, if you had a button to press with the fentanyl in it, would you have pressed it? Like no. the epidural? No, because at this point I had been educated on everything and I knew that. And at, all I, all I was thinking about is what is best for my baby. At this point, it's not about me anymore through the pregnancy, through the labor and everything. I say, yes, it's about me. It's about what I want. But when you're in active labor, it's about your baby yeah, and doing what's right for them yeah. and getting them out safely. Yeah. So, so I remember you, you were just basically, you're bearing down, just trying to, to breathe while, while he started coming out. And then I remember they, um, I remember his head started to come out. And they t- they asked me if I want to touch it, and I for some reason I reached down there and touched his head, which was kind of well, crazy because it was, what you was were in crazy water. though. What was crazy though was I remember your water breaking. I yes, I I I thought at one point that my water broke, and but because I felt this pop. Mm-hmm. Looking back now, that was his head coming out of my cervix, and I didn't know it. Um, but I felt this pop, and I thought that my water broke. And no, maybe it wasn't his head. Come. I just felt this pop. Yeah, you thought. And I thought my water broke. But then like the next contraction, I felt my water break. And it felt like a fire hose was shooting out of me of yeah. water. Yeah, you like, could tell. There was no mistaking There's that no my water question. had broken. And yeah, I remember the inside the water, like it was a little bloody after that. Um, and so they, they could tell that. And it was it was cloudy. dark. Yeah, so, so it got a little cloudy. So and- yeah, I remember because they thought that he had pooped, and he was in distress. But then they they said no, it's just cloudy. It's not meconium, or whatever. It's he didn't that. poop. But anyway, so I remember to, that because I was worried. Go to him coming out and how that how that felt. So then I could feel exactly where he was, and it was just this crazy experience because with Phoebe, I had no idea because yeah. I couldn't feel anything. So I felt exactly where he was. And when it was time to start pushing, like like I said, I wasn't pushing. It was just happening. And it was, um, and, it, and it felt good to push. Mm-hmm. It felt good to push because it felt like I really had to. It's kind of like, I hate, to say, I hate to compare it to this, but it's like when you have to poop really bad and it just feels good to push and get it out. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it felt like. Um. And I remember feeling his head come out and then they said to me, okay, he's going to, they said, okay, this next contraction, he's coming, he's going to be here. And sure enough, like I, I remember looking at Morgan and I remember saying, I can't, I can't because I was so scared. It wasn't really that it was, yes, it was painful, but it was mostly that I was scared. Yeah. But you did. They all they all calmed you down. And they calmed me your down. Your next push. I remember Tara. She looked at me. She said, "She like grabbed my face. I think, or maybe she didn't grab my face, but she like no, she, was like, she like, like made me. sure that I had her attention. She was like, you got this. You can do this. You are strong.' And she said, "Your yeah. baby needs you. Your baby's gonna be here in a minute, and you're gonna be holding your baby." And she just like brought me back to like focused. So then I the next contraction, he's out, and I get to. And, but I was on my hands and knees, so I didn't get to like grab him as soon as he came out. The, um, yeah. 
Well, and his cord was wrapped around his neck. His so cord. she she asked me if I wanted to catch him. So I was there. I was ready to to grab him, and he came out, and I was reaching for him, and then she she is like, "Oh no, his cord's wrapped around his neck." He let out a scream right away as soon as you as soon as you pushed him out. Um, I shouldn't say that because you you weren't pushing, but as soon as your body, I guess, pushed him out, he came out. He started screaming, so we knew he was okay, and but his cord was wrapped around his neck, and then uh, I wanted to. I remember I just wanted to do it, but um, I just kind of had to like let her do it because she's the professional, right? So, so she ended up getting his. It wasn't a huge deal. She got his cord unwrapped around his neck, and then um, you held him, and and then they. They got you out of the water pretty quick. I remember after that. just instant crying. Yeah. And thanking God. And just like instant, like just bliss. Like just calm, peace. I got to hold my baby and he wasn't crying. And they were a little concerned that he wasn't crying, but he was just. He was just chill. He was just staring at me. He was so calm because the environment that he came into was so calm. It was dim lighting. It he was wasn't not getting spanked or, I mean, they didn't spank Phoebe yeah. either. Maybe they did. I don't remember. But he was born into warm water. He wasn't freezing cold as soon as he came out. Yeah. And he was just so calm and just staring at me. And I remember just like staring into his eyes for like the first two hours of yeah. his life. And you stood up right after. So you were on your knees in the tub, pushed him out, stood up within 10 seconds. Yeah. And this is all on video again. But you got out of the tub, moved over to the bed. And then they, they started they pushing said, on your stomach. They they had pushed on my stomach to make sure that um I was getting all the afterbirth out. Yeah. And then and that hurt. And then right? after that it did hurt. But after that, they, they all left. They left. They said, Okay, we're gonna give you two hours with your baby. Yeah. And so we just chilled with Shepard for a little bit. Then within and, uh, the they, next and they kept the placenta attached to him. I remember that. They put it in a bag and just set it on the bed next to us and and just let it drain basically right yeah yeah and that was the next couple hours they come in and then finally they they let me cut it and then morgan took the placenta so that yes. she could morgan took my placenta so that she could take it to somebody else to get it encapsulated so that i could take it and get all the nutrients from it um because i had postpartum depression really bad with phoebe and we can get into that in another episode but I had postpartum depression really bad with Phoebe, and I did not want to get it again. And so I knew that my hormones needed to be in balance in order for me to not get it again. Yeah. And update, I don't have postpartum depression this time. Mm -hmm. And I think a huge part of that, though, is that I was so connected and in the moment with my birth. Yeah. And I wasn't disconnected. It wasn't traumatizing. Um, And within, what was it three hours later after having the baby... Three hours after, after Shepherd, having Shepard, we they home. they tested everything and they made sure that he was good. They made sure that I was good. His oxygen levels were up. And once everything was good, they said, okay, you can go home. Yeah, we put him in a car seat and took him home. Yeah. It was amazing. And we got to just, like, so we just got to go for... home and spend time with our baby. It wasn't, it wasn't coming in every two hours and interrupting me and, like, pushing on my stomach or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, and so and, you're at the birth center for probably like four hours, but right, it was pretty quick. Yeah, because I I got there at seven, and I had him at eight forty one p.m. Yeah, and this is the last thing that I'm gonna say about this experience because we're really like going over time. But earlier I had said that I would explain how I knew that God was telling me to wait for His perfect timing. Phoebe was born October twenty seventh at two forty one in the morning. Shepherd was born August 27th at 8.41 p.m. Like the numbers aligned. Mm -hmm. that, that to me was like, because I had felt like he was saying it to me the whole time, but I didn't want to listen. I didn't want to just let it be. And that to me was like, okay, God, from this day forward, I am trusting in your perfect timing for everything. And I have. I'm always trusting in his perfect timing. And it's just like that to me was like the most, Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. And I wish we could go into to more about that because we have more stories about that kind of a thing. But, but yeah, we got to end it. 
We gotta go. We gotta get. We gotta get Phoebe. So release our babysitter from. Yeah. Let us know. Kids. Let us know if you want us to do a part two, or we can do a postpartum thing. And but yeah, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for getting us to, you know, 130 yes, subscribers. Yes, we got now. to 100 subscribers. We have 130 something yeah. now. And uh, yeah, just thousands and thousands of views on our shorts and our podcast is doing pretty well for being three weeks old so yeah yeah thank you all um we love you guys and uh yeah see you next week bye